200cc first made its way into the Mario Kart franchise back in 2015 as Mario Kart 8 DLC, and has been a staple to it ever since appearing in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in 2017, Mario Kart Tour in 2019, and Mario Kart Live Home Circuit in 2020. But as you may have guessed by the endless amount of 200cc videos I've made on this channel, Mario Kart Wii is my favorite way to play this high octane game mode. In January 2019, Mr. Bean 35000 VR, the creator of CTGP, released 200cc from Mario Kart Wii and I've been playing it ever since. Mr. Bean's 200cc offers a 1.5x speed bonus over 150cc to match Mario Kart 8's 200cc as well as an added brake drifting mechanic, allowing for the option to slow vehicles down around tight corners. He also impressively altered the game's gravity, so you have the option to make your vehicle fall faster in the air by holding up. All of these new mechanics work flawlessly and at times you almost forget you're playing a mod. After three years of dabbling, I've put hundreds and hundreds of hours into racing 200cc to help form these upcoming opinions, but I want to note, these are less set in stone than my 150cc opinions as I played the game for 10 years before devising that list. And remember, these are just my personal opinions based off my own experiences. You'll definitely see some similarities with this list to my 150cc tier list, but at the same time, there are quite a few big shakeups, and with that, let's get into it. Starting at the top, the lone vehicle in S tier for 200cc is the mock bike. Big surprise! <laughs> Not! It took all of 3 seconds for the community to realize this was the ideal vehicle for this game mode, and although I have the mock bike ranked 2nd on my 150cc tier list, there are a few factors that really put it in a league of its own this time around. First off, it's inside drift, which is a completely broken and ultra fun mechanic in this game, all of the inside drift vehicles are going to show up first on this list because inside drift matters that much. Along with having inside drift, the Mach bike has a high speed stat, medium weight, a better acceleration handling and off-road stat than the Flame Runner, and a completely busted drift and main turbo stat. It lands smoothly off of jumps, has a narrow hitbox, and even though it's slower than the Flame Runner just slightly, speed doesn't matter as much on 200cc compared to 150 because you're already going ridiculously fast. Its versatility is unrivaled, as it's the easiest vehicle to pull off crazy shortcuts with, and is my go-to vehicle for every 200cc speedrun or KO tourney, and I don't see that ever changing. And now we move on to A tier. Let's start with the bullet bike. This thing really shines on 200 and becomes more competitive with the top tiers on this game mode as opposed to 150, where it's clearly outclassed by the Mach Bike and Flame Runner. It is ever so slightly slower than the Mach Bike, but it inches it out on almost every other category, such as drift, main turbo acceleration, handling, and off-road. Unfortunately, the bullet bike has a fatal flaw, and that is its abysmal weight stat. Even if you increased it by 50%, it would still be a point below the mock bike, and that's enough of a reason to bump it down a tier. Weight matters tremendously for avoiding getting bumped off, but it also affects your landings from jumps. This vehicle bounces all over the place, eating your trick boost upon landing flip tricks all the time. Luckily, it's less of a problem on 200 because of the fast fall mechanic Mr. Bean added, but it still isn't ideal. The one benefit to its low weight is because you get high air off ramps. It makes executing certain shortcuts an easier time. It's a shame Nintendo shafted lightweight so heavily in this game by making weight matter as much as it does, but hey, Mario Kart Wii was never a game that thrived off its balance, was it? Omitting its weight stat, the main reason this vehicle thrives on 200cc is because it can I mean, it can handle every track, even the most twisty and curvy ones like DK Jungle Parkway. It's equipped for almost any situation. It's just a scary vehicle to use on tracks without rails, like Royals Goldmine or Rainbow Road. The Flame Runner is up next, and honestly, these two are pretty interchangeable, and I'll explain why. I actually prefer the Flame Runner to the Bullet Bike on many tracks, even though it only wins in two of the seven categories, those being speed and weight respectively, because I've used this vehicle so much on 150cc over the years, which has made me extremely comfortable with it. It's definitely better than the Bullet Bike and even the Mock Bike on the less complex courses like Peach Beach or Moo Meadows. However, the Bullet Bike doesn't struggle on any track whatsoever. And I can't say the same about the Flame Runner. When Parkway, DK Mountain, or even something like Delfino Square or Maple Treeway gets chosen, I have to rely heavily on the Brick Drift mechanic to even get me through the laps. And this slows you down significantly, and it's really hard to navigate those courses. The Flame Runner has an above average drift stat but even this is not enough to combat the 200cc struggles. Sorry Funky Kong, this ain't 150cc, it's Daisy's turn to reign supreme. B tier is a fun category with some of my favorite vehicles in the game. 
At the top lies the Quacker, a vehicle that takes one of the biggest leaps from 150 to 200 cc of any vehicle ever. Because speed matters less on 200 and acceleration plus handling matter more, this vehicle truly shines. It actually has the most accumulative stat points of any vehicle in the entire game, which is truly impressive. It's not the best at front running, although it's the easiest to drive on any track, and I recommend it over any other vehicle in the game on 200 for beginners. Like straight up, this thing would be A tier if it had a medium weight stat. Unfortunately, the reality is it has the lowest weight stat in the game, so despite it having incredible other stats, this thing gets tossed off the track like a toddler throwing a rubber ducky bath toy out of the tub. And combine that with classic Mario Kart we lag, often there's nothing you can do about it. On tracks with walls, it bounces right off and accelerates back to full speed, but it remains B tier because respawns take forever in this game. Right behind the Quacker is the Sneakster, the second fastest inside drift bike. I enjoyed using this vehicle on 200 a lot more than I expected. It has an impressive speed stat and higher acceleration and weight than the Mach bike, but loses significantly in both drift and mini turbo. The main perk to using the vehicle is being slightly faster than the Flame Runner, of course, which is awesome, and its drift stat is respectable on most tracks with brake drifting making it a little easier. However, here's the thing. It has the same problem as the Flame Runner, not being able to navigate the twisty sections all too great, but these problems are amplified even more on U-turns or spiral sections like N64 Bowser's Castle or BC3 has. The big positive is if you can get in a front running position on the simplistic tracks, you'll break away fast, and you don't even have to worry about getting bumped off nearly as much as you do when using a lightweight vehicle. Now we move down yet another tier, and at C, rank 6 and 7 overall, we find two vehicles everyone loves, the Dolphin Dasher and the Magic Cruiser. We're going to knock them both out at the same time, since they're similar in a lot of ways. The Dolphin Dasher has completely average stats all across the board, except its drift stat, which really sucks. It's redeemed heavily thanks to it having inside drift and the proficient off-road stat really comes in handy a lot more on 200 because it's easier to fly off the track and find yourself trudging through grass and dirt on a regular basis. The Magic Cruiser has even better off-road and the drift is a little bit better as well, but it has slightly less speed and suffers the same lightweight curse as the Quacker and the Bullet Bike. And like I said before, weight really matters online. So I'd have to say I slightly prefer the Dolphin Dasher. I will say though, the Magic Cruiser's acceleration is just good enough where it's actually better to my knowledge to not charge a standstill main turbo while completely stopped, and that's pretty cool. Can't say the same about any of the S or A tiers. And on tracks like Sherbetland or Shy Guy Beach, these vehicles still dominate, which is something that'll never change. This also remains true for certain retro custom tracks like Dry Dry Desert. The Jet Bubble rounds out C tier as the eighth and second to last inside drift bike. Let me just say, the Jet Bubble is the epitome of mediocrity. Nothing about it stands out at all whatsoever. It's so incredibly average that it hurts, but it has inside drift and in Mario Kart Wii, that's enough. And plus, hey, it's environmentally friendly, right? Actually, you know what? I take back what I said earlier. It's not quite mediocre. Six out of the seven stats are, but the weight stat is still garbage. And like every other lightweight in this game, it really suffers from that. I mean, come on, Nintendo. Why did you have to make weight matter so much in this game? Oh, well. Anyway, what can I say about the Jet Bubble? Well, you know what? I think this is just a testament to how much Inside Drift matters. It really shows it the most here, with Jet Bubble being ranked so high despite it being so, like, understated. It matters even more on 200 than 150 because you have less time to make decisions and dodge items. So the extra agile control you can harness matters it just matters even more than ever. I mean, I really miss Inside Drift in the newer Mario Kart games. And no, that weird hybrid drift thing in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe does not count. It's not the same. Don't even start. <laughs> okay, okay, rant over. Let's move on to D tier. All right, it's time to enter the somewhat viable tier. And up until this point, only Inside Drift bikes have shown up. But it's time for that massive shakeup I was referring to earlier. Leading off D tier, we have the Sugar Scoot. Jumping up two tiers from 150cc, this was the biggest surprise of the entire testing period for me. Now you're probably thinking, how? And I'll tell you how, the handling stat. In 150, handling matters so little because inside drift is everything, but on 200, it's difficult enough to not hit walls or fall off, so after releasing a mini turbo, the handling stat really comes in clutch. 
The Sugar Scoot also has surprisingly great acceleration, off-road, and mini turbo. Its speed is meh, and its weight is okay, but I was shocked while using this thing how well I was doing. Two thirds of the vehicles in this game really struggle on the majority of the 200cc tracks, but I can't say the same about this one, and quite frankly, if I was better with outside drift bikes in general, dare I say, this thing may even make its way into C tier. But we are not done with the wonky D tier vehicles just quite yet. Next up, we have the classic dragster and day tripper. These vehicles rank so highly because they're very easy to control and that actually matters on 200. It's the same reason the Quacker got such a massive boost. I prefer the classic dragster to the day tripper mainly because of its solid drift stat. The day tripper edges it out in many other categories though, like off-road, main turbo, and handling. I think it's comical how I prefer these over the top 150cc carts, but they're just so much easier to use and evading items isn't a chore due to their proficient acceleration and handling stats. When I do a 200cc cart only knockout tournament sometime soon, I can guarantee you'll see me on one of these two vehicles. Now it's time for E tier, the barely viable. Here lies the last vehicles worth mentioning who made it out of the F tier dumpster. And which are they? Finally showing up, we have the Mini Beast and the Wild Wing. The best two carts for online on 150cc are known for their exceptional speed, mini turbo, and drift. But they struggle on 200 with speed mattering less and handling and acceleration mattering a whole lot more. You can have some really great races with these when nothing goes wrong, but when things go wrong, <laughs> They go really wrong. They're clunky, and it often felt like I had no control over my fate while operating these clunkers. The blazing fast speed of the races combined with these carts lackluster movement options put me in the crosshairs of my opponent's firearms on a regular basis, and it got old fast. They still got swift speed and tight drift going for them, two important factors, and it's enough to keep them out of F tier, but I can't put them any higher than E. I think it's important to note, however, these vehicles will perform better in car only rooms as they'll be able to front run. But if bikes are involved, I prefer the classic dragster and the day tripper, oddly enough. The last E tier vehicle I'd like to mention is the Zip Zip. It's actually similar to the Sugar Scoot in more ways than one. It's an outside drift bike, of course. Uh, it has bad drift, but its solid handling sort of makes up for it. And something people fail to realize about the Zip Zip is how it has a better off road stat than the Dolphin Dasher. So it's a sleeper on Shy Guy Beach and Sherbet Land to take home gold. It also has a slight weight advantage over the Sugar Scoot as well as a nice speed boost in comparison. I really enjoy using the Zip Zip honestly, I just wish it had better handling and drift because it would seriously be C tier. I feel like this is one of the least talked about vehicles in the game, but it's definitely an interesting one. All right, we finally made it to F tier. Just like before, I'm gonna make some honorable mentions, and these go to the Bit Bike, Shooting Star, Honey Coop, Spear, Standard Cart, Wario Bike, Standard Bike, and Cheap Charger. You can definitely make multiple tiers within F, but at the end of the day, there's no denying how unviable these vehicles truly are in this absurdly fast game mode. The biggest disappointments for me were the Spear and the Honey Coop, honestly. The Spear dropped the most of any vehicle from my 150cc tier list. This thing is so bad on 200, it's not even funny. It's pure torture on most tracks, and since speed matters less, this thing suffers the most. I didn't expect to see an inside drift bike in F tier when I embarked on this journey, but trust me, this thing definitely belongs there. And as for the Honey Coop, clunky, clunky, clunky. I was expecting it to be about equivalent to the Wild Wing, but I had so much trouble controlling it despite the smaller hitbox. The bit bike is really zippy as per usual, and definitely does better on 200 compared to 150, but at the end of the day, it can't front run due to its extremely low speed stat, and the weight is quacker level bad, and you combine that with a mediocre drift stat and outside drift, and yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. The vehicles in this tier either have more fatal flaws than one, or just blatantly average stats all across the board combined with outside drift. But with all that being said, you'll see me using all of these vehicles and many more on my new 200cc KO series playing the official CTGP knockout mode in the near future. I'll be doing my best to give these vehicles some extra limelight as I challenge myself with one F tier vehicle at a time. More on that later. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed my Mario Kart Wii 200cc vehicle tier list. Finally uploaded this thing at last. 
And uh, what tier list would you guys want me to make next? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you want to help out this channel, hitting the like button helps tremendously. And please consider subscribing as my channel is filled with Mario Kart content. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Enjoy Funky Kong dancing as always. And peace.